Good evening. Uh, this is the March 24th, 2021 meeting of the Climate Smart Kingston Commission. My name is Julie Noble and I am the chair and also the sustainability coordinator for the city of Kingston. Uh, with us today, so far, we have commissioners Melissa Ayacheta, Jessica Coonan, Kevin McAvoy, Roberta Rivera, Dan Smith, and Cal Truman uh, of voting members. For ex officio members, we have myself, uh, Michael Darcy, representing New York State Assemblyman Cahill's office, and we have Ariel Gartenstein, representing the engineer's office. We also have some guests today. Um, Joey Lynn, would you, or Jerry, would you like to make any comments for the record? Hi, uh, no comments for the record. Uh, it's Joey Lynn. Um, I'm super grateful to be here. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to find out what it's about. So thank you for having me. Great, thanks for being here. All right, any other public comment? Uh, I suppose I should have called the meeting to order. That happened at 502. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Um, all right, so if, uh, welcome to our guests and to everyone. And uh, you have any public comments, so we'll move on to modifications to the agenda. Are there any modifications? Okay. Uh, then we'll move on to review, review and approval of the February 2021 meeting minutes. Um, the minutes that I did send to you, I did highlight uh, the review of the January minutes because that must have been copied and pasted from a previous climate um, smart, but for the city in Kingston. And so I, uh, I didn't actually have in my notes who who I usually write it down. And for some reason last month, I didn't write it down. So I don't know who moved and who seconded on the, on the minutes from last month. Kevin, do you have that? Oh. Because this is, this is. What, from. So what is noted here? No, 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 that's right. That's right. I, it, the only thing that's not right was where it uh, had the wrong month. It can't be because it says it was made by Jessica. and She wasn't here. Oh, Jessica day. wasn't there. Hmm, I'll have to look. I'll have to look for that. See if I find it, or listen to the thing and right. uh, and edit it. You know, I only listen to the end. Yeah, you know, to pick up what I missed when uh, Mike was speaking, and I, I I had to cut out early. So uh, yeah, okay, I'll edit that. Uh, just, yeah, that that should be fine. Okay. Um, besides that, are there any other um, modifications to the minutes? Oh. Okay, so seeing none, um, I need a motion to approve the February 24th minutes as amended and amended they'll be including the right. uh, motion and second from the minutes. Can I have that motion? Melissa, can I have a second? This is Serena, I'll second. Okay. So Roberto's hand first, actually. So it's going to be Roberto. Uh, and any discussion? All in favor? Raise your aye. hand. Say aye. Thumbs up. Something to say no. Okay. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. And thank you to Kevin for putting that together. Uh, it looks like we've got a couple more folks joining us. Serena is here. Hi, Serena. And Karen, welcome. Um, actually, she's joining still and a couple more guests. Welcome to our guests. Um, so we're moving through old business, uh, Climate Action Plan 2030. Oh, Serena, did you have a question or are you voting? It was a belated vote. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's good I got to, fat fingers. <laughs> good to be confident in your votes for as long as possible. <laughs> um, so, uh, Okay, Climate Action Plan 2030. They, at this point, Citizens for Local Power is uh, moving through, really honing in on their uh, engagement strategy. And it seems like the next effort is going to be a combined effort of individual one-on-one, -on -one, more personal meetings with specific mm -hmm. stakeholder groups or stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And the 
uh, simultaneous with big group uh, meetings. Basically, to take the information from the survey, which we have, and to drill down into how do we get from that using the survey as one tool, but also conversations as another tool. Um, our leadership from the Cadmus side has changed. So it was Ben Butterworth. It's now Farah Anderson, who has been working with us for a long time, but Ben is no longer with Cadmus, so he's not on the project anymore. And I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, there isn't really any more movement um, at this point. Maybe Betta knows more. Hey, Betta. Hey, T. Hey, everybody. Hello. Sorry, Sorry we're late. That's right. Um, Betta, have you been involved in the CLP process with the Climate Action Plan or no? Not so much. Mm, I'm not a lot. No. Okay. So I guess that's where we are. And uh, just keep your eye out for emails or updates on NPH Kingston. Um, all right, Dan, any updates on refrigerants? Yes. I started uh, entering the audit. So putting it into uh, like a worksheet that I uh, got from a company that I'm working with for a grant uh, that I'm using with Bard. So it's like a you know refrigeration uh, auditing spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm just taking all the you know the physical audit that Sean and I did uh, a few months back and transposing it. So I'm, I'm about halfway done. And at the end of that, we'll have a pretty good idea of what the city-owned assets are, and you know how much refrigerant you're liable for. Okay. I'll say for the record, it's very tedious work and I hate it, but we're almost done. Like another another hour or two, we'll be done. Oh man, your hatred yeah. will, soon, will soon cease. Huh? Your hatred will soon cease. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and just starting to work on in my, in my head, uh, you know, amending the language to the city regulation. So how do we bring that up from the, uh, you know, like the late eighties, early nineties from the Montreal protocol and update it for, you know, so it's very ozone depleting centric and updating that for the, uh, you know, the, the, the amendment and what is it? The Kigali amendment and just updating it for global warming potential language, that sort of thing. Okay. By, the, by the way, any of the guests at any time, we've all been kind of working on these things for a long time, but if there's something you want us to, to clarify or update you on or go into more detail on, just raise your hand and well, you can certainly do that. Uh, Better, are you guys raising your hand? Is everyone down there raising their hand? No? <laughs> we were just never, never too young to learn about refrigerants. We were cheersing because we were so excited about Oh, we're cheersing. Work. I yeah. just totally missed it. <laughs> I was going to say cheers, Batman. Cheers, Batman. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. Thanks, Dan. Anything else on refrigerants? That's about it. You're okay. pushing them. All right. Awesome. Um, city sustainability projects. This is a little bit of like a broken record, but I'm going to repeat. I'm just, I'm make, I'm just trying to make it easier for, for Kevin in the minutes so that he doesn't really have to update them. I'm just gonna read last month's <laughs> uh, Okay, the LED project, as I've said for half a year plus, is really, really close to completion. As a matter of fact, this evening, after this meeting, assuming it gets dark enough soonish, I'm going to go through my last two dozen lights to check on them so I can sign off and be done with this. Um, our trans transition of our, all of the extra old lights and extras and things that we ordered uh, is happening eminently so we can close out the actual uh, staging area. I've already signed off on the substantial completion for the project. And so uh, we are super, super close on closing this project. But from a public perspective to all of you, it probably looks complete. Um, so it's been fantastic. Uh, and very long, but I'm happy to almost close it out. Um, I did, may have mentioned the last time and, uh, that this is coupled with the license plate reader project. Uh, 
I might have said the last time that that was being run through NYSERDA, which maybe caused confusion. It's definitely not going through NYSERDA, it's through NYPA. So uh, maybe that was why there was confusion the last time. It's near power authority, not NYSERDA. So this has nothing to do with NYSERDA. Um, it is near power authority and that is who is uh, providing the grant funding for the license plate readers and who we have the bond to pay uh, for our little, the LED lighting. Um, the organics plan is moving along at the same rate that it was, still drafting, working on the draft on that with, with Carla, uh, Hudson Valley Regional Council. Um, we have recently, Ellie's been doing a little bit of legwork because we've had to update some information regarding uh, restaurant and gather more information regarding restaurant locations within the city of Kingston. We had done a survey previously um, and I've inventoried all of, as part of this project, all of the commercial and residential collection that we do citywide, which means I recorded, you know, kept track of every commercial location where we pick up recycling and trash. That wasn't currently, that wasn't previously something that we had the data set for. Um, but what we realized that was that we didn't have the data set of every other restaurant then that we don't collect from. So Ellie is working on that so that we can have the universe of all the restaurants in Kingston to help inform our organic diversion plan. Um, the parks projects are opening back up. Um, I have playgrounds that are gonna be put in hopefully within the next month at Barman and Raquel Knox. Um, we've decided on the playground type and are finalizing the design for the one down at Kingston Point. Uh, the bid has gone out and will be closed on April 13th for the Kingston Point Park Improvement Project. Uh, so the construction will start in May and go through September. And that project includes a new elevated soccer field and a new elevated parking lot, not elevated like Scott, like high line elevated, elevated like sea level rise protection level. Um, and so that construction is happening this summer. Um, we, are uh, going to be paving Block Park. Uh, we're going through the environmental review process for that. So there, we're gonna be making improvements there at Block Park uh, to elevate the parking lots slightly um, out of the floodplain as much as possible and pave those and make those formal parking areas. And, and we're doing a couple small other playground projects in some other places. Um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on this call, but I've also been working for about eight months with a team on a skate park proposal, um, putting in a skate park uh, in one of our parks in Kingston. Um, and so that has been a, a, a big learning process for me. I'm not a skater, um, but I have a 10 year old who is. And uh, so it's been really great to uh, understand that culture, understand that um, process, and uh, we'll, we'll see where that, that goes. Um, right now we're working through kind of the insurance part of it. So we'll see how that kind of lands. What's, what's the name of that organization again? Kingston Needs a Skate Park. This is a plug. Kingston Needs a Skate Park. That's the name of the, of the project advisory committee working on it. And working very, very diligently. Um, I don't know what else I normally report on. That's probably it. Yeah. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my updates on, on uh, that. Ke Ellie will talk about a couple other things a little later on the agenda, and we'll talk about some other things later on the agenda, but that's kind of the sustainability projects update, updates right for now. Um, Melissa, Repair Cafe. Any updates on that? Um, not really. I've been a little unresponsive with that. Um, I kind of been putting a lot of my energy in the pizza sticker campaign. Um, I wonder if Andy has any information. I I may have missed another meeting from um, Melissa Everett um, that I, I didn't know was official on the 13th of March. Um, do you know if there was one or not? You're muted. You're muted. 
sorry. Um, okay. No, I don't. I don't know about. The, I can look up what was on March thirteenth if you give me a second. And, okay. But I don't think it was about Repair Cafe. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she did send. Um, after the first one we had, she sent possible dates of a second one, but then nothing was really confirmed. But she did send a test to the email list to see. Um, I think there's forgot how many um, 100 coaches and uh, facilitators um, that John had an email list of and she tested um, who, who was still in touch, um, if there was any new people that needed to be added to the list. Um, so there's people all from all over, all over different towns that responded to that, which was cool. Um, um, I didn't have, I don't have a meeting on March 13th okay. on my calendar. Okay, good. Then I didn't miss anything. Um, there, um, I do plan on reaching out to the Kingston coaches this week, just to touch base and see, you know, who's vaccinated, um, who feels comfortable, maybe about a summer outdoor thing, um, and just get a sense now that we're kind of more through um what everyone's thinking so what did you say other communities are doing is everyone generally on hiatus some are planning an outdoor event um some are planning virtual events but you know doing something i know the kingston coaches were not interested in a like diy online event their whole thing is like they want to be interacting with the community they didn't really even want to do a drop-off service because they didn't want to feel like they were you know just fixing stuff they want to have that dialogue and um, really share their knowledge so um yeah i think i mean i think the social part of it is just as much as anything else and we interested yeah. to see what what their success or perceived su success is of virtual events yes i attended some of those they're very challenging um <laughs> you know the, the whole reason someone goes to the cafe is because you know they don't have the knowledge to do it themselves so then trying to articulate that to how to open a panel or something and you know how to diagnose even was yeah it can take hours <laughs> um but yeah i guess we do what we need to do in the circumstances that we're under yes okay uh anything else on repair cafe i don't have anything for now okay um and give us an update on the pizza box campaign all right so it's been taking a lot of time <laughs> Um, huh? Oh, I was I was waving my hand because we got pizza from Fire for the People on Friday, and every box had the sticker on it. <laughs> not put in the recycling. Yay. And my housemate was like, "Oh, we don't recycle these." I was like, "No." Oh, you should have did a re you should have uh, videoed that for our Facebook. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll reenact it. We'll get more pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's great. Okay. So you far, Pie for the People. Tell what? the folks, uh, tell the visitors, the guests, what this is, why my excitement is so, so happy. Okay. So it is a sticker campaign that we made uh, to help people understand that pizza boxes are not recyclable. Even if they're clean, there's no grease on them. Um, we can't process them in Kingston. Um, so we have 30,000 stickers printed. A select few have actually been given to the pizza places right now. Uh, but the hope is that, you know, for a certain amount of time, whether it be a month or two, um, the, every pizza box that goes out their door will have a sticker. It gets to the person, the person reads the sticker, and then hopefully that will reduce our contamination of recycling. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of community outreach. Like, you know, I initially tried to just Facebook message people or, or email people. You know, a lot of businesses don't even have email addresses, which is interesting. Um, some of them just have like a contact us thing on their website. Um, so yeah, me and Serena divided it up. Um, I think I have eight places and she has around the same. Um, but we went to each place, dropped off the letter. Um, I followed up, Pie for the People have them so far. Vincenzo's has the stickers. Um, and then this week I'm gonna follow up with the rest of the people on my list that have the letter, but I need to bring the sticker component. Um, there have been challenges, Serena can contest. I think she got some of the trouble, <laughs> troubling businesses who aren't as cooperative. Um, I don't know if you wanna speak on that or no comment. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I went into a private space. Sorry, I have a lot of very rowdy kids in the background. I, I apologize for not joining by video sooner, but um, <clears throat> I thought it would be a distraction. So I did have, I think, my difficult customer right off the bat. So I'm hoping that 
based on your experience, a lot of the rest of the people will be more amenable. Uh, the next stop that I was going to make was Broadway Pizza, and I picked a very bad time to do that the other day. So I got kind of um, bounced out on on the, the next stop that I had on my list. But I still plan on going back to um, the first place that I went and then following up on the rest of the people on my list and uh, just had one of those weeks yeah. On top of one of those weeks, on top of one of those weeks, like this cannot yeah. possibly go on forever. <laughs> I need a break. Yeah. You so, a challenge. Was what? it pie in the face? <laughs> was it pie in the face week? Uh, like you literally you didn't get a pie in the face, right? <laughs> it, it feels kind of like a pie in the face week. And, and basically the best part of pie in the face is it's all about how you take the pie in the face. It's not about not getting pie in the face. It's about how you handle it afterwards. <laughs> So I'm, I'm rallying. Yeah. And so we have and I had an idea to, to give bins with the stickers oh, yeah. so that we're giving them kind of a containment tool. Yeah. She went out and bought bins, which was very great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't even think of that. I guess when you're prepping, um, you know, space and at the end of the night, you want to sanitize, you should be able to move them around. So that was a really great idea that she came up with. Can you remind me if it's a, is it a roll or is it individual? It's, it's individual stickers. Yeah. Here, I can show you one. They're right here. <laughs> yeah. And Serena went back to one place, I think two or three times. And, um, well, I go back to them because they're my favorite them. pizza place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's a sticker. It's a flat sticker. It has a fold in the back that makes it really easy to open. You just pinch it and it pops right open. So you don't have to peel it at all. You just pinch it, fold it in half. It opens right up. It would be, it's really easy to just kind of lay it down, pinch it, stick it on. Yeah. It's and not... with that, um, I did, um, since we started getting them out in the community, I made like a Facebook post on our Facebook. We had like 400 people view it, which is cool and react and share it. Um, well, not 400 people didn't share it, but 400 people engaged with it. Um, and yeah, I did like a photo shoot with my friend's dog uh, holding a pizza box. <laughs> so it's on our Facebook page. Um, I noticed Karen and Serena have been liking all of our posts. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, we're, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel with closing this. And we just got to get more of the legwork and yeah. Honestly, start starting the social media campaign was a huge boost because that I, I was like, I can talk about that. That gives me a place to start. It, it gives the whole tie in. So I appreciate that because that really that's a good, a, a really good tie in. OK, cool. So then now that it, this is actually rolling out, I'm going to put it on the website. And so yeah. you're going to need to let me know who has it so far. So you're saying five of the people and Vincenzo so far are committed and I'll put their logos up on the website. Yeah. Um, but keep me posted as you as you have wins so that I okay. can get that up. We'll do. Great. Thank you for all your work. And is Cal, were you so excited to see it? Or did you know you were gonna get it? Did you go there on purpose because you feel like as a test? I didn't know. We ordered pizza on Friday and uh, my housemates set it up and I was finishing something and then I went over to join them and I started yelling about the pizza box. They're like, what, what, what? I was like, it's got the sticker. <laughs> so it was not staged. Great. It was not planned. But it was and planned. you already educated one person, which means yeah. that's a success. I always say, even if one person gets something out of this, it's worth it. 30,000 stickers, we don't need the rest of you. We've already got one. <laughs> Yeah, now Charlie knows, don't recycle the pizza boxes. See, for all the naysayers who have said, you know what, Julie, this is a waste of your time, this is a waste of money, boom. Even in the pizza Charlie places knows. themselves, like Serena was saying that she's kind of going back and forth with one of the owners because he took out like a pizza trade show book and was like, they're telling us that the pizza boxes are, are recyclable. And, you know, technically they can be, and Domino's has a whole campaign on their website about, them using recyclable cardboard but it's just yeah it's just it's ridiculous but not in kingston it's kind of like plastic in the triangle only certain numbers are accepted in your area so that's like that, what i'm trying to get through the thing about plastic is because in the triangle that's not actually a recycling symbol that's a resin code it's that's a type a of plastic other, yeah whole other problem yeah uh, yeah yeah 
that's what I've been spending my whole last two weeks is trying to convince, unconvince people to look at, stop looking at the triangle, like disregard the triangle. If you live in Kingston, don't look at the triangle. The um, number in the triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Even the triangle. The triangle doesn't okay. mean it's recyclable. And the, and the number is irrelevant in this town. Okay. Karen, so that. Who's, Karen, are you speaking to us? I, it dawned on me just now what you're saying. They're looking at the recyclable triangle and not the number inside the triangle. Yes. And so they are throwing those clamshells into the recycling because of that triangle. So our next campaign has to be stickers that say, ignore the triangle. Well, <laughs> so here's the, here's the and I could talk about this under solid waste, but since we're talking about it now, I'll talk about it now. Um, when we rolled out dual string, we put out a fridge flyer that everyone got that had, this is what goes in yellow, this is what goes in blue. And then the stuff on the bottom was, this is what goes in trash. Um, and then we also put out the calendar, which has like the, this is when you put out your cycles. Well, we've learned that it's time to do another fridge flyer. So um, I'm redesigning the one that we put out and putting an entire, you know, one half of side of the sheet is just yes, yes. And the other entire half is all no's. And there's going to be a huge message on it that says like, and I haven't figured out the, how I'm gonna do it yet, but disregard the triangle part of it, disregard the number inside of the triangle. If you don't see the thing pictured on this picture, it goes in your trash can or it goes, or you have to divert it somewhere else. And it's just a very difficult learning thing. And it's challenging because a lot of people make that exact same argument that you're making. You know, the trade show says this, the whatever says this, my neighbor's town does this, waste management does this, you know, whatever it is. I understand all that, but, but we are, we send all of our trash and recyclables to Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency and they are who, that's whose rules we follow. And so that's a, a challenging message. Um, you know, and it's all challenging because you don't want people to be discouraged from recycling, but we can't wish cycle in this town. We just can't do it because we get so much contamination that then then that those loads get trashed. And so that's why- I'm, I'm gonna be making a post on wish cycling actually that goes along with the pizza boxes. Cause it's, that's the thing I just learned about. It's like you, you think something's recyclable or you want to hope it is and you don't look into it and then that's contamination, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not better to just put it in and, and hope for the best in, yeah. our, in our area. It's just not. So I'm so excited to hear. I, I feel like I kind of, well, now that we know the places, I was going to use the excuse of, I we should just all go get pizzas at every location to see who has it. But we all know who has it already. So support the businesses that are supporting us. That's great. Yes. And so then, who is that at this point, Julie? Is that right now it's pie for the people in Vincenzo's. And Vincenzo's. But the work is yeah. continually working to, to gather more. And yes. Charlie. And Cal's Charlie. <laughs> Tell Charlie I said hi. I sold Charlie a house. That's right. That's right. Karen knows Charlie. <laughs> now he knows not to recycle pizza boxes. Nice. <laughs> One win under the belt. All right. Good work, team. Yeah, Roberto. You got it? Julie, can you hear me? Yep, there you go. Okay, I'm back. Did you have a question? Yeah, have we thought about using billboards for educational outreach? Uh... Like in the community, you know, like, Sometimes when I'm going down Albany Avenue, I see the like uh, advertising between two lampposts. I see these giant signs, and you know they advertise like, "Oh, it's March 15th. It's uh, St. Patrick's Day, or, or something of that nature." Is it? I don't know. Just just a thought that came up. I think oh, that's a great idea. Are you talking about billboards as in traditional billboards, or are you talking Both. about banners across the road? Banners and or billboards. Um, because I know in, in Georgia, the, when, when the, during the voting, you know, they, in order to get people to vote, they had billboards everywhere. And apparently it worked really well. 
So I was just wondering, just just something that I wanted to just start wondering about. Yeah, I mean, I will say, interestingly, we haven't thought about doing billboards. Even Are they expensive? <laughs> they're about they're about six hundred dollars a month, is my understanding. I see real estate agents buying them all the time. Yeah, I. I don't know. I guess I've never thought about billboards. That's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. I mean, we, we do banners for events. There haven't really been banners for with messaging otherwise. And I'm not sure that that this administration would support that. I'd have to figure that out because I haven't seen any banners besides event banners. And if we do set up something that's like, do this or don't do this, that sets precedence for anyone to be like putting a banner up across every street, everywhere that says, do this, don't do this. Okay. Um, but we could, and this sort of segues very well into the other thing I wanted to talk about under this item, which is what do we want to do this year for Earth Fair or lack thereof? Okay. And it, it's say, hey, there's no Earth Fair this year, but Throw away your pizza boxes. <laughs> like whatever. But no, I mean, we haven't talked about billboards. I, I don't know. I've never, it, it, frankly, it never even crossed my mind to think about billboards, even though I drive past dozens of them every day. What about a reward system for Earth Day, seeing as we're not going to be able to do anything? What about um, gamification of it in some way? Do a certain action, gain a certain points, earn a reward, city composting bin, water collection, rainwater collection bin, something. Some sort of gamify it, make it a social, a social experiment on uh, something with composting or tending to the garden, weeding, doing some action on Earth Day that will earn rewards and keeping track of it. Yeah. How would we track it? We track it in social media. Oh, you, you have picture, you have somebody send you a text of them doing an action. They earn a certain amount of points for that action. Make an Excel spreadsheet, keep track of it that way. I don't know. What do folks think of that idea or other ideas? But back to like those rolling uh, things. We have so many people today or, you know, by 10 o'clock, I don't know, just a running tally on one of those, you know, those things that light up. Oh, scoreboard? scoreboard? Yeah, scoreboard kind of thing. Public, not just on a, you know, it's a great idea. I'm just trying to take it to a more visible. I'm not following you. What are you saying? Do you know those She's saying one of the signs that sits outside of business. Remember the old lighted signs that Thank some of them Mike. had the arrow that pointed, yeah. hey, come here, and then you put the little letters up. They, yeah. The Brudehoff makes digital versions of those that you can customize and put whatever the hell you want on it. Maybe that would be a way of publicly giving badges or acknowledgments to people who are doing the most actions on Earth Day. Is that right, Karen? That's right, Michael. You are brilliant at interpreting my hand signals. I got, I got your back, Gail. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know you do. <laughs> I don't actually think we permit those in the city. Oh. Which is why you don't see any. Uh, Come uh, to my diner. Come to yeah, my diner. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. To my yeah. Diner. yeah, yeah. I don't think we permit those. Joey Lynn? What about um, kind of on that idea, but maybe not like incentivizing it, but keeping a running tally, whether it's on social media somewhere where people can see like how many people are participating. So, you know, they show us that they've participated in some way and it's like 101 people have participated, 102. So it's keeping a running tally that, you know. That's a great idea. Makes people want to incentivize it in some way. Mm -hmm. Competition invites competition. <laughs> this seems like a lot to plan in a month. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like a photo pledge of sorts, just having people 
on social media say they're going to take one action from a list that we provide um, to show that they're participating, maybe, um, is my input, but. You're saying take a, have people take a picture of themselves doing something? Well, no, like um, you could say like, I pledge to take shorter showers or I pledge to unplug my electronics before I leave the house or I pledge to um, just like, you know, some sort of like, like we give them a list of actions they could take and then they're just deciding to choose one. Um, it doesn't have to be a photo pledge. It could just be a, a, a written status pledge, but some sort of like social media pledge. Um, I love Beta's um, picture of herself on Facebook with the compost composter. Oh, thanks, think, Karen. You're yeah. so sweet. That was my, one of my New Year's resolutions was to like regularly share little green tips. Um, so thank you. It's a little corny, but um, yeah, I mean, I like that idea, Melissa's. I agree. I think like given we only have a month till Earth Day, we need to keep it simple. And uh, I think that would be a fun thing. And maybe we could even like if somebody was able to do this, I don't know, Julie, someone, you know, who works with you. I don't know if anybody on this team would be able to do it, but maybe we could like um, do, have like a little Google map or there's like some map apps that um, we've used with New Yorkers for Clean Power where we'd have like the map of the city and then like each person who you know, did the social media post with their picture and their pledge, like could somehow be reflected on the map. So then like, you know, you could see, sorry, you could see on the map, like all the, you know, people kind of popping up. Maybe you could, maybe, I don't know, there's like a form where you fill out or you put the link. I don't know. We have to think through kind of how to keep it simple, but some way where you could go to like one page and you'd see kinks and you'd see all the little, you know, kind of pins of all the people who've taken a pledge. Um, I don't know. There's probably some way of doing it simply, uh, I but I like the idea, Melissa. I make maps for a living. I do GIS. So I could look into that. <laughs> we could figure something out, I bet. Right. Yeah. That wouldn't be yeah. too I don't hard. Think it could be a ward to ward by ward competition. But then how would it be, what? It could be competition by ward, but then how would we, oh. how would, how would I, thought we, we're, I thought you were keeping it simple. <laughs> yeah, ward, ward, to, ward by this, ward might be hard since a lot of people- not, This is not unsimple. Ward. It's literally a map. With a sprinkle of competition. Okay, no, no, yeah, no, no, you're, no, you're, no, you're okay. right. It's not unsimple. What's what about unsimple? downtown, midtown, and uptown or something? I don't know. Yeah, but- that doesn't we work. Just, we just have an off the cuff conversation about that. I live in none of those parts of town. I, I know you've brought that up before. Because um, I feel strongly about it. Well, the other thing is, you know, we could like, we could kick it off at Earth Day and then it could be something that continued until like Arbor Day or I don't know. We pick like an arbitrary end date, but we make it a campaign where we are, we're encouraging. That's a people good idea. To, you know, it doesn't have to just be like Earth Day week or something. It could be something that we do over the next like few months um, and then just kind of keep populating the map. I don't know. And use a hashtag. Um, so maybe, maybe there should be like a group of us that find a time to, you know, talk this out more. <laughs> I mean, I really like the idea. Even if we did it from Earth Day to Arbor Day. Yeah. I mean, Cal? I have a thought um, that is sort of in another direction. Um, is, is it definitely not possible to have any kind of Earth Fair at all? I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if having an outdoor event at some place like Deed Stadium that's really big or at the park, like that's pretty spaced out, you could have just like the food trucks come and maybe be like you have to have your picnic blanket separate from other people or something but if it's outdoors and people are spaced and you can go get your food and you're like spaced out from other people it still might be nice to have like the music like you could have like a band and like food and people could be spaced i don't know is it definitely not 
is it definitely not a good idea to have an in-person event, I guess what I'm asking, since it would be outside. It's not permitted. Oh, I didn't know it wasn't allowed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Plus it's, we're talking 30 days. It takes us normally like six months plus to put together the Earth Fair. The way you posed it made me think you were saying like, well, we could do it, but what else could we do? I didn't understand. Well, the what else was like, a billboard, I don't know, something simple. That <laughs> feasible. Yeah. Well, Andrew, with my partner here, who ordinarily wouldn't be at our meetings, but um, <laughs> he was just saying, saying the farmer's market happens. Right. So maybe we could mm. like do something at the farmer's market. Yes. Oh, we yeah. have a photo pledge booth there. Oh, snap. Now we're talking. Yes, <laughs> that is a good idea, Melissa. Okay. Yeah, we used to do those at SUNY New Paul's a lot. And then, yeah, you create those like Instagram things, you know, that people could pose in um, or like write with Sharpie, like what they pledge. Um, and they love to do that and post it to social media. Oh, hold on. I don't think the farmer's market even opens until May. No, they've had outdoor markets. I, it's every other week or something like hey, that. It's, it's, not, it's not every weekend, um, but they, they were in the Senate garage and they moved back outdoors. Um, right. Yeah. Man, that's some early spinach. <laughs> it, the the winter that. market's definitely more low key than the summer one. Mike's already doing it. <laughs> what is he doing? What? I vowed to compost. What is this? Oh, you are, you are, oh my. Compost. Rock on. Okay, first of all, I already compost, but I was just showing you how quick that one simple thing could do, and Melissa has a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, but, but don't you feel like that could, anyone could sit here and write something on a piece of paper? How about proving that you're doing it by taking a picture? Oh, Julie. Well, it's encouraging people. It's raising awareness, you know? Obviously, nobody's like in my house policing me to see that I, this composting thing is full of crap. But, you know, <laughs> I posted something just to raise awareness and it, you know, hopefully helps to spread the message and get the conversation going. And I think that's um, what we're ultimately trying to do. We do can't we have like, a tablet at all? For you mean? I like for tabling. Well, New Yorkers for Clean Power um, has an iPad we can use. Okay, because there's also like you could sign the pledge in person also. Mm -hmm. um, that would contribute to the map we want to make. Um, or there's even yeah, I don't know. We can marry the two kind of. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm down to um, volunteer for you know a farmers market to do a pop up thing. Um, I will too. And also you could frame the thing as uh, I pledged to, as opposed to I am now, you know. Yeah, I, right. It's an Earth Day yeah. pledge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what action do we need to take to make all of this happen? I think we have to have a meeting where we hash out more of the plan. Dude, the... Uh, I'll be on yeah, the I'm happy, ha happy to help out with tabling or, or whatever. Okay, so we're talking subcommittee here. I'm here, Melissa. Meta. Mm -hmm. Yep. Karen. Is that a yes? Who else? Anyone else? Okay. Robert Roberto. <clears throat> okay. So then. What do you need from this group, the larger group as a whole? Um, well, idea, if, like ideas for actions people could take, probably would be good. Maybe we could just start like a Google Doc and people, hmm. people could throw ideas in there, like suggested actions. Okay. I mean, and we could potentially have the actions um correlate to and this could also be like a practice for or, or something connected to what we want to do with cal's museum thing too you know like, oh, like people at the museum can take the pledge what like people who go through the museum can take the pledge there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because we were going to promote the kings the actions of the king the kingston climate smart 
like icons with actions, right? And so we could start developing that for this campaign and then also have it be part of the presentation in the Cal exhibit and have, yeah, people do a little like DIY Instagram thing to keep doing it. So in that case, we wouldn't want to end it at Arbor Day. Um, maybe we could end it on the International Day of Peace. I don't know. Cal, when does your exhibit, when's your exhibit running? Um, it opens on uh, probably May 1st and it's a permanent exhibit. Hmm. Well, we could do just the end of the competition where we're, you know, trying to see who in Midtown, Uptown, blah, blah, you know, but keep the, the map up and, and the pledge going in a way. Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, there, right, you mean like not ending it, just have it yeah. continuing. Right. Yeah. 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 There's no reason to end it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cal, do you like that idea? Pizza is forever. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like conceptualizing it. I think so. I'm, I think we're all conceptualizing yeah, I was like, I'm not 100% sure I understand what's being proposed, but the ideas are <laughs> positive. So why doesn't the breakout group get together, formalize the plan, and then come back to the next meeting with a formalized concept? That would, well, that that would streamline things, right? The next no? meeting will be Earth Day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> Keep up, keep up. So we have to throw something together pretty quickly. Yeah, because um, the next meeting will be after Earth Day. Mm. Earth Day is the 22nd for those right. the, the Darcy's and others that haven't follow, been following the conversation thus far. <laughs> right, so we should, pro so our subcommittee should probably find time to meet next week. And, um, and yeah. Ariel, I forgot, what's your nickname again? Uh, Ellie, but you can call me Ellie. Ellie, Ellie right. Um, and, and Ellie can, can also maybe help with this project, Julie, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so maybe we should just, who was it? Um, we should just find a time to meet next week and try to throw this together. Yeah, so Melissa, okay. Ben, Aaron, Roberto. Okay. So, so Julie, you or, or Ellie can send an email to us, you know, with some available times that you guys are available. And then Melissa and I can, we can chime in when we're available. And Is Roberto. Is an actual, actual or virtual meeting? Actual. Virtual. Everything's virtual. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Cool. I'm excited. I, Earth Day is like my my thing, so I'm glad that we're able to do something. Yeah, agreed. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, who's on, who's, this is Roberto, Betta, Melissa, and Karen. Yep. Yes. Let me write that down, and I will um, get on that tomorrow morning when I come in. Good job. Thanks, Ellen. Awesome, Cal. What else do you need at this point? Um, so I need to uh, check in about what the uh, commission is up for doing as far as um, initial effort. Like there's some one-time efforts and there's some ongoing like periodic efforts. Um, so the one time, uh, let me actually pull this up. I wasn't hundred percent sure when we were gonna discuss it, but um, some of the one-time uh, tasks would be um, write up a short description of what the Kingston Climate Smart Commission, um, what the mission is and what the purview is and like why people should um, get involved and like maybe one or two, like probably just one, like here's something interesting or exciting that we've managed to um, accomplish as a group. Um, I can think of a bunch of different things that could be that. Um, so that only has to happen once, it'll go up and people will be like, oh, this is a local org that I can connect with if that's the kind of work I wanna do. Um, I'm just pulling up the, the email. Um, uh, some things that'll be more ongoing would be um, once a year sending a, a one page, like here are the main objectives of this year's uh, climate 
plan for the group because in January we'll go over like okay for the climate action plan here's some stuff we want to make sure we cover so like that might be a good thing to include um, another ongoing thing would be like periodically sending pictures once I've got a digital frame set up that you can just text pictures to um, so there we go I've got the email um, but that's that's so that's most of it um, when events exist again, sending like palm card sized flyers to put up on the cork board. Um, yeah, that's basically, those are basically the tasks. So do those sound like things that this group is up for? Um, does that sound like too much work? Um, can we commit to that? And if so, I'd be happy to continue to carry it and just bring back, um, okay, we're ready for this. Who can do that? Um, did folks get to look at the um, image? Okay, cool. I know you have questions, thoughts, any discussion. Or if you just wanna say, yeah, we wanna be involved in this uh, exhibit and are up for those tasks as laid out. Uh, they were, they're kind of hypothetical because I'm not 100% signed off on everything, um, but that's the general scope of what it would be like one longer thing of like here, for example, is what Kingston's doing as an overview and then the smaller bits. Does that sound um, reasonable? Do we like this? Exciting? It sounds good. I missed last uh, month, Cal, but um, yeah. I've been doing a lot of thinking on action nine. Um, I'm working with some grad students at Cornell to kind of come up with how to develop outreach materials and how to capture what people are doing. So it sounds like this link with the museum could be something that we can, you know, count towards our certification in, in future years. So um, oh, cool. I'd love to work with you to how we can capture that as well. Okay. Um, and this kind of segues, well, actually I'll just stop there in case anyone has something else to add. Yeah, I how, tried to. Oh, yeah, go ahead. How are we doing with actually having the photo frame for the, the digital photo frame? Do we have the raw materials? So um, I've sourced the frame that would work. It costs about 100 bucks, um, a little bit more maybe um, with shipping. But uh, the positive thing about this kind of digital frame is that you can you just there's an app or an email address and you can just text the picture to it. So not everyone gets to have that because I don't want anyone, we don't, we want like some level of security of who is sending images because I don't know, somebody could send jokes. Uh, and so- uh, Are you saying you don't trust us, Cal? Is that what you're saying? I trust this group, but do <laughs> I trust everyone? No. So, <laughs> uh, so I would want to be mindful about who is, who is the point person or a couple point people who want to send pictures. So so that it's fresh, but it's not like overwhelming. And so that it's not like, oh, no one's, it's no one's job, so no one did it. You know, I think it's better to have a couple of point people the same way we have people who update the Facebook, for example. Um, but so the frame, uh, I've sourced the frame uh, and can order that. And does it make sense for the Facebook person to receive pictures at her, let's say Melissa, I'm not sure who else is doing Facebook right now um, and have her be the point person. I mean, I don't want to assign this, but it makes it could, make it sense to have, oh, sorry. you know, the Facebook person be the person who then sends you. The, it could uh, be the same person, but it doesn't have to. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm trying to figure out how to make it so that uh, when, because my involvement with the project only goes until probably the beginning of June, if that long, um, mm -hmm. just because that's the extent of the grant. Um, mm -hmm. The question is how does this partnership continue to work when I can't facilitate it um, or when I'm not, it's not my job to facilitate it, so. Can you set it up so that the Facebook, whatever we post would show on that screen? Probably not because okay. it's a different uh, type of interface. Like it's not a web interface, it shows just images. But okay. if you wanted to screenshot something, you could send it and it would show up for, you know, four or six seconds or however long, 12 seconds. Okay. Um, so that would be possible. Um, it will be a uh, landscape. So if you've got really good upright pictures, they'll still show, but they'll have the black box next to okay. them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the plan thus far. Um, it sounds like uh, folks are generally up for this level of involvement. It's not too much. 
No. Okay. No, it's all dovetailing. If we're going to get people aware of the um, different actions we can take, mm -hmm. and we're thinking in terms of let's take our pictures like Betta did with her compost. It, there's a lot of different ways to do that. If we could just keep it top of mind, it seems like it could translate into some visuals. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, the other thing is there will, even if we're not having events right now, you could tack up one of the stickers from the pizza boxes, for example, of like a thing that you could put up in the- You um, could have yourself throwing a pizza box in a brown lidded bin. Right, you can show the picture, <laughs> you know. yeah, there's any number of things. Yeah. So um, I guess the, the like one pager with the little icons of like, here are what we're doing, here are what we're doing. Yeah, for this, 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 the, the different aspects of the plan. Um, I would want maybe one or two people to volunteer to work on that. I can be one of them. Um, I would love to have a helper, um, but, I, but it's not critical. I can also just do it. Um, other than that, I would love to have one or two people volunteer to uh, write up like a paragraph, like very, very brief, but uh, impactful paragraph of like, here's what Climate Smart Kingston does. Here's something cool we have accomplished. Here's how you join us. Um, and then other than that, it'll be just sending pictures and putting up flyers, which is hopefully minimal. Yes. Oh, um, I, I can volunteer to help with that. Cool. With one of them, both of them? Uh, yeah, both, either, or. Awesome. OK, just volunteers to help. Okay, anybody else excited to help with those? I, I can do brief, impactful paragraphs. It allows me to confront my inner uh, writer's block. Spectacular. I will follow up with each of you separately. Awesome. Very nice, thank you. I am glad, I'm excited about this. I think it'll be a good uh, symbiotic relationship. Thank awesome. you for your time. And Jess, did you need something else? Did you want to continue where you were with that conversation? You you cut off for a second because you paused, but did you want to talk about it? Um, yeah, I'll just mention briefly that um, I'm working with some grad students at Cornell to develop some materials to help communities throughout New York State achieve climate smart actions. Um, we zeroed in on action nine, which is outreach and engagement. And Kingston has actually um, gotten points for this where I'll, way more than other communities are utilizing it. Basically, it's like an underutilized action. So I might be reaching out to some of you to just like ask like about the different outreach campaigns you're doing. And then we're gonna try to create like a template or like a plan that communities can use to achieve this action in the future. And it might be able to help us with some outreach campaigns in the future as well. We were thinking like, you know, if we wanted to do an outreach campaign on like proper disposal of refrigerants or something like that. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of things um, we could come up with, but that's kind of going on over the next two months with this class. It's kind of a fast turnaround, but I might have an update um, next month and I might reach out to some of you. Awesome. What What is it, who are you working with on that again? So that is with, um, the professor of the class is Allison Chachertron from Cornell Center for Climate Smart Solutions. And I'm also collaborating with uh, Melinda, who's on the line, and a couple of CCE educators in Dutchess County. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay, so we'll continue to talk about that. You'll reach out to people as needed, and we'll continue to talk about this all, all of these things that we just talked about next month as well. That was like a solid lot of information on one agenda item, people. And more than one time during that one agenda item, I heard people say, I'm really excited about this. That's the kind of thing that I like to see. We are doing great things. That's right. Okay, anything else on outreach and education? All right, moving on to green business challenge and green jobs. That have anything on that? Um. Yeah, actually, amazingly enough, uh, there is progress on this and the county uh, 
put out an RFP, I just learned um, to hire someone. Uh, I guess they want to hire like an outside consultant to do the work, um, but it's very similar to the green business challenge that uh, some of us deliver uh, developed uh, with MANA's leadership a couple of years ago, and now they're calling it green business champions. But uh, it sounds, you know, very, very similar. A lot of the materials we developed, they're going to be using. And I guess they're looking to hire someone really soon. So I just learned about the RFP today. Uh, I guess they put it out. I don't know. I didn't know they put it out. They said no one like applied to it. But did we even know that there was an RFP about this? So it's an RFP. So the, I, the I'm a loss. I thought it was, they were going to hire an employee. Yeah. So they changed their mind about that. And they're, they want to hire like an outside consultant to do and And the RFP, I guess, apparently is only like for six months, which is not great. Um, you know, probably should be for a year, but I get, you know, to get this really rolling, but that's what they're doing right now. <laughs> so that's my, that's my understanding. I just learned that they like put out this RFP and nobody applied. So now I guess they're rejiggering it or something. And Wait, are you, I thought you said that the RFP went out today. You're saying the no, RFP. Like, I guess it went out already like a month or two or something and go, I don't know. It's very strange because Cal and I were on the Ulster climate smart committee meeting Monday. And I feel like we didn't get hardly any information about it. Right, Cal? And then today I was on a call with some of the CLPers, Citizens for Local Power, and they said they had a meeting yesterday with Evelyn and like, you know, from the county, Evelyn Wright, and that apparently there was an RFP and nobody applied and now they're still looking for someone and maybe Jeff Demansky's outfit may be applying, but then it seems like they're still looking for someone. And actually, Melinda, um, someone on our call today suggested CCE would be like a, potentially a great candidate since you guys are already doing a lot of stuff with nice sort of programs and the energy navigators thing and all of that. So anyway, I don't know much, <laughs> but I know something's happening. With well, all of that that you said is more than I know. I mean, yeah. I so mean, you're saying, so basically an RFP has gone out was out for a month already. And that's what closed. I heard today. But you know what? I'm going to, while we're on here, before I forget, I'm going to shoot Evelyn an email right now because I was not privy to this meeting. This is like secondhand information. And I will CC you, Julie, and we will get to the bottom of uh, the latest with this program. Okay. I don't, yeah, well, I don't, I, I, I don't want to sound like I know what I'm talking about because I don't really. <laughs> All right, well, share whatever you have because it's, if there is an open position or consultant op position, I would love to help promote that for the county. But I, yeah. this is the first that I'm hearing about this. Okay, I'm gonna email. All right. Before before we move on from the agenda item, I just wanted to add in the call that you helped facilitate for me, Betta, with Jess Clegg, um, to discuss green jobs and sustainable infrastructure getting built into the Kingston City Land Bank contracts that we're currently um, entering into for the enterprise grant with Novo to get these first five houses built or uh, uh, renovated and sold. So that meeting with Jess led me to put the item on the acquisition and disposition subcommittee agenda. And um, I was able to get it onto the subcommittee meeting agenda and then it also came up in our report at the main meeting I'm happy to say where Peter Buffett was in attendance and so Peter Buffett got to hear us tie in talking about all of this and we brought up the citizens for local power and brought up um, New Yorkers for clean energy and it was good it was a good tie in I think that this is all we're all doing the same work and I think it's really um important that everybody who's doing this kind of work in Kingston does it with this in mind. The energy stretch code came up briefly, but nobody really knows enough about it to tie it in at this point. I mean, Hugo Jewell did come and speak to our main board, 
but we're kind of trying to figure out who's the right person for them to speak with at the Kingston City Land Bank. So right now it's Daniel Cantor, who is our chairperson, has agreed to talk to, um, I forget who the people are who we wanted to refer him to, but they're the people in charge of contracting out the home energy audits and also the people, um, I think, to get in touch with about heat pumps and all of that stuff. So I don't know a lot about it, but I wanted to get the the preliminary discussion out of the way with like us and then let Daniel have a substantive conversation with someone who knows enough about it to get it written into the next contract. So that was kind of how I pitched it. And I just wanted to make sure that got in on, on some part of this meeting so that you guys know that I'm trying to tie in um, what the Kingston City Land Bank is doing with creating green jobs, working and potentially with um, these contractors to get this stuff built into the renovations that we're doing and certainly trying to get it built into the process for going forward for any new construction. Great, and Ellie will give an update on where stretch code is um, in just a moment uh, to give everyone a clue on that. Uh, great, anything else on green jobs or green business? So just so you guys know, the um, Cornell Cooperative Extension of Dutchess County and Sullivan County are the new RUPCO for all of the energy efficiency contractors. So if you wanted to reach out to, I believe, Sean Welsh and Cornell Cooperative, he could turn you on to the local contractors that he's familiar with that do the energy efficiency assessments and retrofits. Hugo, Hugo would also, Hugo should also know this. Do you have Sean Walsh's email? I can, I can pull it up real quick. Great, can you put it in the chat please? Thank you. Okay, okay awesome. Anything else on that agenda item? Uh, any zoning updates from Kevin? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think this is going to come up on March the 31st at the Finance and um, Audit Committee. Uh, there was a meeting earlier in the month, or maybe it was late February, I think it was in March, beginning of March, uh, that they had, and it, it went on for quite a while, but, and they, it, they didn't quite, they were very close to approving the, um, the uh, money for the, for the uh, <clears throat> zoning at that point, but what got caught up was um, CICRA. The question was, is CICRA included in the bid and they did include secret when they did the uh, it wasn't that big of a deal when they did the um, the actual comprehensive plan they wrote the plan and then in the margins go back and look at the plan you'll see what i'm talking about they wrote in the margins the um secret discussion so when it came time to have the public hearing that served as the environmental impact statement so yeah, I, and we have a number of sec people with secret experience working in that crew, including John Nolan from Pace and David Gilmore, who's also done a lot of secret work. So, and, Do and Dover and Cole uh, both attended personally, which is kind of impressive getting the two lead partners, you know, talking to the common council. I thought that was, they're very interested in the project. So. Uh, that'll be continued on March 31st, and uh, the council will either approve of it or not. So we'll see what happens at that time. All right, great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, anything on renewable energy that we want to discuss? Well, the county is also moving ahead with that solar eyes county-wide program, so that might interest people. Um, Cal, I don't know if you were at the meeting too, if you wanna say anything about that, but. I don't remember, sorry. No, oh, it's okay. Um, I guess they're still putting out the RFP to partner with uh, community solar, you know, companies, and then we'll be promoting that discount to county, Ulster County residents. So it'll be, um, you know, the discount that you get through Community Solar, but sort of in partnership with the county. And they uh, said that they are, you know, have inclusive financing in mind, which means there shouldn't be 
uh, a energy or sorry, a credit score, which is often a barrier for people that to sign up to community solar. Um, and I can't remember when they said that was going to be available. They may not know yet, but hopefully soon. Um, and yeah, so that was, I don't know, that was just kind of a report back from Monday's meeting. We had our Ulster County committee meeting. So some good news on that front. Great. Okay, anything else on renewables? Uh, stretch code, Ellie and or Jess. Let's start with Ellie. Um, so stretch code had, we are moving forward with stretch code. Jess and I have been coordinating for the past few weeks, month or so. Um, we got a resolution through the laws and rules committee, bringing it in as an ordinance um, so that it doesn't require the additional one month public comment period. The Common Council is going to be voting on it on April 6th, April 6th, and if all goes according to plan, um, the mayor will sign it April 7th, and we'll be good to go. Um, in terms of the resolution and adjusting the uh, stringency from like the sample text that NYSERDA gave us, um, I know last month I very briefly said something about altering the text uh, to, you know, only have it apply to substantial renovations and new constructions. Turns out we didn't need to do that. And our building inspector got on board with the sample text as it is. So um, hopefully we will uh, have stretch code in a couple of weeks, really exciting. Um, we got a unanimous vote from the laws and rules committee, which is four out of nine voting members of the council. And so we really only need one more person to vote yes. And then it's through. And so, yay, yay, Jess. <laughs> Thank yay, you. All of you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Good job, job, everybody. Yeah. Can I, ask, can I ask a question? Yep. Absolutely. Just remind me, I, I, I was anticipating that this would apply only to new construction. Mm -hmm. Re remind me how it's applying to retro fitting or, you know, building permits or, you know, how is this actually going to apply to, su to somebody in an older home? Help me out with that. I know we went through a lot of it, but um, what's being approved with respect to existing homes? So in the resolution that we drafted, it was uh, left from, the text was left from the NYSERDA sample text, which I can pull up right now. But in terms of you know, defining substantial renovation um, and, and retrofits, you, there's no need to retrofit an existing building. Um, if you are doing a renovation on your home that requires, I wanna say, I don't know the exact percentage. Do you, Jess, do you remember the definition of substantial renovation that we, that we can? 50%. 50%, if you're like doing a renovation on your home that require 50%, um, replacement of, you know, heating and cooling or electrical equipment, then it is a substanti substantial renovation that would require uh, you to abide by the new, by New York stretch code. Um, anything less than that, it is pretty much on an opt-in basis. If you want to do it, you can. If not, then it just resorts back to the old building code. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and translate this for my brain. Um, okay. I, I need a new furnace. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm obligated under the new code to get the heat pump or I can get, instead of an oil furnace, a natural gas furnace. In that case, it would be your choice to opt in because you are not doing a, a renovation on your home that would require a 50% or more like, you know, gut of all the systems. So it's your choice. Oh, 50% gut of, 50% of all the systems. Yeah. Gut. Okay. Not that's, that's, what, yeah, that's, what's, that's what's confusing to me is 50% of what, you know? So I, I have the language in front of me. It's substantial renovation means the replacement of more than 50% of a building subsystem within any consecutive 12 month, 12 month period. Subsystem means a building assembly or building set of units made up of various components that serve a specific function 
including but not limited to exterior walls, windows, doors, roofs, ceilings, floors, lighting, piping, ductwork, insulation, HVAC system equipment or components, electrical appliances, and plumbing appliances. So just replacing yeah. your furnace, um, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to get a, mm -hmm. you know, a stretch code approved furnace. So yeah. it basically is a major renovation of a home. Yep. <laughs> now you are um, obligated under the stretch code to do this, that, and the other thing that's mm -hmm. energy efficient. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, and it's only it's it's like four main things like it has to do with the building envelope insulation lighting fixtures and there's one other one I can't remember, but I don't believe it tells you like what type of furnace you have to get or if you have to upgrade from like an oil to a gas or something. Only certain furnaces are eligible for nice sort of stuff. <laughs> you had said something about opting out. Oh, no, sorry. There's no opt out. Um, yeah. It's opt in. So if you are doing like a construction on your if you're doing a renovation on your home that uh, affects less than 50% of the subsystem, then you can opt in to the New York stretch code and you can opt in to, you know, applying this, you know, updated building code standards to your home. Um, there is no opting out, though. So if you are doing a uh, renovation on your home that is 50% of the subsystem or more, you are required to abide by the stretch code. But that went through our laws and rules committee fine, so. Okay. So when you go to the building department, uh, put in 49%. <laughs> oh, you mean you have to yeah, ascertain the percentage? You have to figure that out for yourself, the percentage of the... 49%. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to encourage people to electrify and do energy efficiency. I'm just kidding. Of but course. If you get, your, if you get your inspection, though, and then you're not 49%, then it doesn't matter. That was a, so. that was a question that came up on the Laws and Rules Committee call, because um, apparently the definition of substantial improvement has changed over time because people have like tried to game the system in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really good um, call if, and the recordings on the website, if anyone wants to go watch it. I was super excited. We had Mike Deween on the call. Mm, Steve yeah. Knox was there mm -hmm. giving his full support and, um, and our city attorney as well. And so I feel like we were able to answer all the questions and everyone was happy about it, so. Fingers went, crossed for next week. It went really well. And I think all of the committee members um, not only voted yes, but also gave an endorsement. Like, I want this because. So, um, feeling optimistic about it. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, Ellie, uh, I have one question just for the, for, I'm doing the minutes. I want to make sure I, I get the right section of the code. I was sort of, while you guys were talking, fumbling through the uh, the code and I couldn't find the word subsystem in there. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong document, could be. So subsystem and uh, substantial innovation is- Yeah, that's what I was looking for. In, I wanted yeah. to get that language, yeah. That is defined in the New York State building code. Oh, the, okay, okay. I'm, I'm looking in the stretch code itself. Yeah, okay. yeah, so that's- that that is back. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah. I'll go I'll go to the state code and I'll get the language. I think it's it defined in ECC, um, New York State, that one? Right, mm -hmm. The 2021, okay. yeah. Yep, ECC, New York State, got it. We'll, we'll get that organized. Um, it's, uh, here, I can put it. Oh, in the chat? Yep. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll grab it out of there and then I'll do this, you know, when I'm also put in the chat the link to uh, LA. I'm assuming that the thing that you sent me, well, where the code was with the substantial renovation, that's what you sent me. This is where I'm, that's uh, when did I send that to you? Uh, March 12th. Okay. Um, but I put in the chat this link to the oh, code. I also put the link to the to the laws and rules meeting if you want to watch it 
Um, we were at first on the agenda, so it's okay. it's for the first hour, and then the link to the the description of substantial renovation. Um, so very, very good work and a lot of it on uh, Ellie and Jess's part uh, and also more team on our end here. So great, great work. Um, I don't see that there will be any issue whatsoever with this passing through. So uh, success. So Ellie, do you wanna then speak to um, what happens next with the nice uh, yeah. Go ahead. So this is, so passing stretch code is one of the high impact actions of the NYSERDA leadership round, which we are currently participating in. Um, we need 5,000 total points in order to qualify for our $125,000. Is it 125 or 135? I can't remember. 125. $125,000 $125, grant from NYSERDA. Passing stretch code gives us an additional 1,200 points. Currently we have 3000 points and that would bring us to 4,200. The remaining 800 points come from the clean fleets high impact action, which requires us to put a um, hybrid uh, vehicle on the road as part of our city fleet. Um, the police department is currently outfitting a hybrid vehicle that they will be putting on the street uh, they told me end of March, beginning of April, I'm gonna follow up with them about that probably by the end of next week, see where they are with that. Wanted to give them time because you know they're busy. Um, and then the last 500 points comes from clean energy upgrades, which is an action that we submitted for, but we had it bounce back to us because they said that we did not have the proper documentation. Turns out we are missing a couple of uh, completion forms, um, but I'm resubmitting for that and uh, that brings us to 5,000 total points. And once we have those 5,000 total points, we can apply for this $125,000 grant, which is very exciting. And we use for a, an environmental project in a disadvantaged area of Kingston. So we're thinking, we're thinking solar in some area, some municipal building, but still working on the logistics of that. But since the last meeting, we've been applied, we've been approved for a handful of actions. We've approved for benchmarking. Um, what else were we approved for recently? I don't remember. Uh, he, good heating and cooling. Clean heating and cooling. We were the first uh, municipality in New York State to be approved for clean heating and cooling. So go us. Um, not even Hastings on the Hudson, the you know, poster child of environmentalism did he clean heating and cooling. We are the poster child. You whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Should oh I not say gosh. that in a public meeting? Okay, we can cut off. <laughs> um, no, no, we are the poster child of environmentalism in New York State. Even though Hastings has 5,000 points, that, that doesn't matter. But we anyway. probably have 5,000 people. Somebody literally just came in the office and said, are you okay? <laughs> Sorry, Julie. I didn't mean it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, things are looking good. Yay. No, there's no going back now. That's no. It. Nope. Okay. Thank you very much, Ellie. I really, really appreciate all the work that you've done on this. Um, nope. Anyone else have anything else on stretch code? Okay. Um, I know that a couple of folks have to hop off at the rate of 630. So just quickly, uh, solid waste management. If you haven't seen the notice or been uptown, we have deployed street cans that weren't there before. So there are uh, now more and will continue to be more coupled street trash and recycling on the streets. Um, and they're Victor Stanley with nice big you know, metal cans and you'll start to see them uptown um, that with recycling. This is the first time that we've put out recycling on the street, street side. So this is a, a new thing for us. Um, Excellent. What's that? Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, more people spending time outside, a lot of takeout, a lot of people just walking the streets. And so for that and many other reasons, uh, you'll see that those have been deployed, which is exciting. Um, that's kind of what's going on with solid waste management. Are there any updates from public safety, Serena, before you bust out? 
Um, actually, the discussion last month was really sparse. I think my report was the best part of the whole meeting. Not surprisingly. <laughs> unless, unless you're really excited about um, stop sign placement at very particular intersections because we were read a fascinating stop sign study and they're going to have to put a bunch of stop signs up because apparently we are not in compliance. Okay, I see everybody's eyes are rolling back in their head. I'm going to stop talking about public safety now, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's, but what it's, is relevant is when we took down the, the lights and put up stop signs instead because we're inherently saving energy in doing that. Oh no, we definitely, definitely are seeing an energy savings and you'll notice if you do travel on Clinton Avenue or on Boulevard that, was it Boulevard? No, I guess nothing came down off of Boulevard, but Clinton Avenue definitely had a major reduction in blinking red lights um, that are now stop signs. So that, that was good. Um, I'm trying to think of what was the other thing that uh, they had to, they had to do some kind of executive session. So it wasn't really that exciting. It was a whole lot of nothing. Um, but I think what I'm going to do just so you know, is because I missed a little bit of stuff at the end of last meeting is I'm going to start with the report on what I didn't get to report on. Because I think from looking at the minutes, there was some stuff that came up after we jumped off. Um, so I'm just going to try to catch up to last month's meetings, meeting minutes, and then um, see how far I get on what happened tonight. Okay. Based on what Kevin can email me. Great. Uh, okay, I'll get on that case. And I'm going to jump off now. Thank you guys so much. Okay, this is going to be incomplete, Serena, because uh, you'll. That's fine. I, I've been at the meeting, so it it. As long as I'm here to see what happens, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Um, anything else, Bennett or Cal, from the Ulster County Climate Smart Committee that you didn't already tell us? I think that's the salient stuff. Okay. Uh, Mr. Darcy, anything that you wanted to announce? Yeah, I have to, uh, you know, validate my existence here in some way. So uh, a couple of bills that everybody should be paying attention to that the assembly member is pushing for. And I'm going to read you the bill number and just a short little description and take your time to research this in your own time. Uh, A77 is a carbon uh, a tax based on uh, carbon fuels, carbon-based fuels. Uh, 535, A535 is a grid modernization act. Um, 587 is a, uh, a credit, uh, tax credit for solar manufacturers as an incentive to create more manufacturing in New York State. 1315 is a, pilot, a statewide pilot for the generation of renewable energy to the tune of 300 megawatts, megawatts statewide. And then 1626 is a uh, community-wide uh, energy aggregation program. So those are some bills that uh, I thought I'd like to highlight for you guys to pay attention to and sort of track as it goes through the process. Do you have any updates on the ones from last time? Like especially the bike following the car one? What was I, do that not. One? I do not. I do appreciate the update though. Um, Mike, I got A77, A535, A315 and A1626. 587. A587? A587. Okay, I missed that. And right. then something. And then Kevin, A1315. 1315, I have. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. And 1626. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, any questions on those for discussion? Any other? Yeah, if, if anyone wants more information, you can always email me. I'll put my email in chat and I'll be able to provide you with updates or language or uh, the bill text. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other announcements, communications, events, or updates that anyone would like to share? Just a note about social media. Um, I've been posting for, for the page um, and I notice whoever's an admin is liking the post as Climate Smart Kingston. Um, so just Make sure you like switch to your personal account when you like something, because yeah. The struggle is real with that. I'm going to give Melissa some of this for that. Good job. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Just a little social media note. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm presenting um, at an event next Wednesday, if anyone's interested on how we could redirect uh, Pentagon money to clean energy and uh, shift from spending over half of our military budget uh, or ha over half of our federal budget on the military to addressing climate and inequality. Um, so it should be very interesting, uh, a little bit bigger uh, issues than <laughs> I usually work on and that we deal with, but people who are interested in addressing the climate crisis um, might wanna join. So it's um, next Wednesday evening. I put a link in the chat to the Facebook event. I guess maybe I should have put a link to register that might've been more direct, but. Um, I could do that too. Okay. So if anybody's interested, all right, despite living in Kingston for seven years, I'm still on the board of Brooklyn for Peace and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm presenting on, on their behalf. There's the link to register. Okay. Got it. Any other announcements, events, or updates? Oh, there is a bike clinic tomorrow. Um, it, it got rain, there's a rain date from today. So the YMCA has a free tune-up program. Um, if you want to get your bike out of the shed, they provide lights, helmets, uh, bells, um, and they have a whole calendar. I did put their whole, they have their whole um, season on our Facebook page of all the, the days coming up, so. Great, anything else? Joey Lynn or Melinda, is there anything you wanted to add or question about anything? Comment about anything before we close? Um, there's nothing. Well, I, I just want to say that. Oh, sorry, I have a lag. So I just want to say you guys are all rock stars, of course. And uh, I wanted to point out that um, Europa McGovern and I have been meeting uh, and doing a lot of emailing to try to put together a spreadsheet of agencies and organizations that are providing assistance to communities on climate smart uh, actions. So we may be picking your brain and reaching out to some of you on that to try to fill that out. Okay, great. Joey Lynn, did you have something you want to say? Yeah, of course I'm new here. So I was just trying to you know, follow along and, and play catch up during this whole meeting, but um, I'm happy to help and super excited to be here. So. If there's anything, you know, I didn't volunteer for any positions because I'm a little lost in what's going on. You know, it seems like these things are well established, but I'm happy to help. So I can drop my email in there and Julie, you have it. So please feel free to reach out to me and I'm excited to be part of the great work you guys are doing. So thank you guys all. Great. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, um, what I had one um, thing I just remembered. A couple of folks last week asked about being added to Manage Joe Green's email list of like meetings and events and stuff on climate. Um, if you're one of those people, put your email in the chat and I will connect you. Um, so let me know and I will connect you. Cause I asked her if there was an easier way and there's not. So <laughs> I'll connect you. Okay. Uh, anything else? What are we posting on social media? Want a picture of the pizza boxes in the wild? I've kind of just taken, I don't know. I've been posting a lot of random stuff. Okay. I have a topic tip Tuesday I'm doing, just, you know, sharing stuff about CSAs and the food co-op and, you know, yeah. Um, events going on that are environmental, sustainability related. Great, perfect. All right. Is there any other business? If not, uh, then I need a motion to adjourn. Cal, can I get a second? Second. Okay. Oh, Melissa. So Melissa's hand up first. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Okay, anyone opposed or abstaining? It is 637. Thank you so much, everyone. There was a lot in the chat tonight. Uh, the chat is all captured automatically uh, and the transcript and everything gets posted online. So you'll see it there.
And I hope you all have a great night. Stay dry. Enjoy the spring. Happy spring. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.